I will say she does a good job. She's scared when she needs to be. She gets angry when she needs to be. She, they do feel like a couple when you need to be. And she does have potential beyond this trilogy and beyond Riverdale and beyond what else I've seen. I <laughs> everyone welcome back to the channel episodes of Joshua I talk movies TV music and anime on a few occasions my name is Joshua Drake if you are new here or if you're a returning player welcome back this is going to be my thoughts for the strangers chapter one this is the first in a standalone trilogy all based on the original 2008 film this is directed by Rennie Harlan and stars Madeleine Pesh and Flory Gutierrez. Simple premise of The Strangers Chapter 1 is that we follow a couple named Maya and Ryan. They've been dating for five years and he's on the verge of asking her to marry him. After their car breaks down in an eerie small town, a young couple is forced to spend the night in a remote cabin. Panic ensues as they are terrorized by three masked strangers who strikes with no mercy and simply no motive. Why? Because they're home, as they always like to say. When it comes to the strangers movies, I was actually, I am actually a fan of the first two movies. Don't get me wrong, I have my issues with them. The dumb character decisions half the time really frustrates me, especially in the first one with the couple. And then the second one, there's some decisions made that are too different for me. Like, I still think in The Strangers Part at Night, you could have had Christina Hendricks beat the shit out of one of them. That's what I would like to have seen. But, I can enjoy them. They're entertaining. They're fun. And they do make me question what would I do if I was in a situation where someone's trying to attack my house. But I was actually looking forward to this, this and this trilogy. Of course, I was looking forward to this for a good reason. I am a fan of the Strangers movies, despite the issues. One, Rennie Harlan is a competent director. I do like some of his movies. Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master, The Event, Die Hard 2, yeah, Cliffhanger, yeah, Deep Blue Sea. Exorcist The Beginning was my first movie of his that I actually ever watched as a kid. There's still some I have not watched, like Cutthroat Island or Miss Trial or My Hunters. And I really thought the 12 rounds was underrated. It's really very complicated nowadays on The Long Kiss of the Night. I know a lot of people really like that movie. I, mm, I'm just very com complicated on it. And The Legend of Hercules is not good. I own it as a guilty pleasure though, because I can en just enjoy the stupidity and just enjoy it for what it is. But I was actually curious to see what this was going to be like. And you also, another reason was because Madeline Pesh. I am a fan of Madeline Pesh as an actress. Riverdale all the way. She's a good actress that's stepping out of that show's comfort zone. Which is why it hurts me to say this one is, I'm not going to say this is one of the worst movies of 2024, but I will say this is another one of the biggest disappointments there. It's a major frustration for me to have to say this, because I do like Madeleine Pesh as an actress overall, I do like this director. This is not a very good start to this trilogy so far, and it does have its moments, but beyond that, there's just one major problem with this movie. In terms of what I like in the movie, I will say there are moments of competent cinematography and I like the color aesthetic and the way Rennie Harlan likes to play with the camera in moments. There's one moment which you saw in the trailer with Maya playing the piano and then you have this whole angle of someone's looking at her from the point of view. That's pretty cool. I do like the cinematography and for the budget that they have, you do get what you're coming for with terms of the violence and the cinematography. There is a couple, a few good scares of tension that I actually don't mind. That I actually got under my skin and the carnage candy, it takes a while to get there. But when it gets there, it's good and it's actually really entertaining to watch. 
so the score wise it's pretty fine it's serviceable it's a serviceable horror score and it's not too long it's not too long really if i have to give this movie any credit the performances are good from the strangers and the two leads maya and ryan is good foreign Gutierrez is good but Madeline Pesh is the reason why I kept watching this movie. No, not because she's attractive. I know what you're going to say. Because that she is. She is attractive. She is a beautiful woman. One of my favorite redhead crushes. Now Damn! Nice. Try not to look. Eliza. Just try. Relax, girl. I'm trying. Yeah! You feel love for her. No. <laughs> Try to keep up. Her acting, I think, was genuinely pretty good. When she has to be scared and terrified, despite the character that she's forced to work with, I think she's really damn good at her. And like I say, in the in if the, if the other two movies are, if anything, the other two movies could be more competent with the character of Maya because of her performance. She does a good job. She's scared when she needs to be. She gets angry when she needs to be. She, they do feel like a couple when you need to be. And she does have potential beyond this trilogy and beyond Riverdale and beyond what else I've seen. I could see her doing bigger things like a character like Angelica Jones from Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends or a Poison Ivy or anything like that. I think her potential is there. So I will say that is what I do like in there. I like the performances. I think it's competently directed. There's some competent cinematography. There's, there's a few moments of scares there. We even have a problem with the fact that they did take the formula of the 2008 movie and and use it here. That's every franchise has a formula that has to be used. So I kind of get why they have to go this route. Unfortunately. The biggest casualty of this movie, what hurts this movie, and what irritates the hell out of me with this movie is the writing. Now, I understand this is a horror movie. I understand that. But there is absolutely no reason why three movies in, if you're going to have these characters make dumb decisions, you got to at least have them make a few smart decisions. These characters, despite the performances, really are really let down by the writing in this and that is my biggest casualty when it comes to this film is the writing is what lets these two down their acting is good it's just i'm like well what are you gonna do the defenses people have for this movie is that you have to make dumb character decisions you have to have characters be assholes in order for this movie to work my answer to that is Boo! Well, you are a wimp! Over there. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. No, you don't. I understand horror movies have this trope. You have to have them decisions in order for this to work. But you can also have characters make very smart decisions in order to get out of this alive. And I just felt like if we had maybe a few smart decisions or a couple smart decisions made by these guys, I would have been able to tolerate some of the dumb choices, but the boyfriend especially. For the first few minutes, I was actually on his side. He's in love with this woman, which who wouldn't want to be in love with Madeline Pesh? You gotta be a damn fool if you say no. Curses! Awooga! Uh, huh? Say what? It's just my problem with this is the fact that the minute they go to this cabin and the minute they get into the town, that ask the whole people are being mean to her because she's a vegetarian, of course. But Jesus, it's really beyond borderline irritating that every decision he makes is even going as far as leaving her alone in the cabin, which. I'm sorry, I would not leave my girl in the cab my girlfriend in the cabinet or something like this. I wouldn't. And 
if you're gonna try and use that argument that you gotta have dumb character decisions, there are plenty of other horror movies where you have characters make some of the smart decisions and they're able to get out alive. So don't give me this this bullshit about it, about about that. Some decisions in this movie it could be, there gets to the point where it becomes too much. And I'm sitting there like, my god, get, either just make a smart decision or just die already. And it, it just feel like they... It's the writing that really bugs this movie down. And on top of that, I will say for as short as this movie is, this movie has some serious pacing problems in the first couple of minutes. It takes a good couple minutes for things to happen. I'm not saying you can't do the slow build up, but I'm like, we've been through this the first few times. Just get us into the action, or at least try to bring the strangers on a little bit early. And you know these people are messing with you with this cabin when they ask, they come knocking on the door and such. And I'm like, by the end of the movie, I'm like, I want both of you to die, but at least one of you stay. The ending is not that satisfying. I. This ending was the biggest cop out. I know there's two more movies. You don't have to tell me in the comments. I just hated the way this movie wrapped up. You have him have a shotgun. Ryan, the character of Ryan, has a shotgun. You think he's gonna shoot them? No. He does No. You just act like a dumbass again. Then you have them in a the car, and just when they're about to leave take the car and get the hell out of Dodge. He still makes the smart the dumb decision. I'm like, uh that's do, do you see what I'm saying here guys? Do you see what I'm saying here? Just the dumb decisions and the way this movie chooses to wrap itself up kind of frustrates me. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? And it is basically a, a retread of what we've seen before, but like I said, that is the least of this movie's problem. The problems is the writing and the dumb character decisions. At the end of the day, guys, this is not something I'm going to put on worse than 2022 material. It's not a movie I'm going to say is one of the worst things ever. If anything, it'll probably be at the lower tier of the worst of 2022, only because of the writing and the character decisions. But if the writing was a little bit better, if you had these two Made, especially that boyfriend of hers make smart decisions to overcome some of the bad ones I would have been fine it's perfectly watchable if you are interested in this if you've never seen strangers or if you just want to watch a movie fine but for me with this first half of this trilogy I, I expected to see some improvement in the characters and it's not terrible I'm not going to rage quit so far, I'm just going to continue this, I'm going to get through the, the rest of the Strangers trilogy, and watch it. Madeline Pesh is capable though, I will say that, just, I need to see some improvement in her character, as well as the boyfriend character, if he's still alive. If you want to watch this, I would suggest waiting until renting or streaming. But even then, you'll probably have the same frustrations as me. Well, that's going to do it for the video that you just watched. If you want to see more, my channel icon is up here. If you want to see more content from me, all my social media is right here in this end card. I will also leave a playlist and a video here for you to see what the channel is about. As always, acknowledge me, stay epitastic, join the epitastinists, and you guys, keep it cool.